get ready because today's video is full of a ton of Dollar Tree DIYs and decor ideas for spring, so stay tuned. This is Whiskey and Wit. My name is Whitney, and on this channel, I love to share DIYs and budget home decor. So if you love that too, be sure to hit subscribe down below so we can be craft buddies. Also a huge thank you to Green Chef for sponsoring today's video and supporting Whiskey and Wit. We'll talk more about them in a little bit, but first let's get into the DIYs because I've got 25 to share today. Up first, we're gonna make these super easy felt lavender stems. From Dollar Tree, you're gonna need some purple felt. You're also gonna need some floral wire and then some sort of green felt. To start, you're gonna cut a strip that is 12 inches long by approximately one inch wide. You want it to look about the same length as a ruler. Once cut, take a thin line of hot glue down one of the sides and then fold your piece in half. The goal here is to create a loop similar to what you would want if you're putting up curtains and that you will see in a minute why it's important. Once your glue is cooled, you're gonna take scissors. I'm just using these small ones by Fiskars cause I saw on TikTok that it's a lot easier to cut and we're gonna cut fringe down the entire thing. It doesn't have to be perfect, you just want some fringy. So now we're gonna assemble our lavender. So you want a piece of that floral wire about 12 inches long. You're gonna take a dab of hot glue to one end of your piece with your little fringies pointing up. Once that's hooked down, just start spinning your floral wire around. Now there's two different ways you can finish it. You can just spin it around and then glue the bottom to your floral wire. That's gonna give you a longer and thinner piece of lavender. Or before you glue it down, take your fingers and push it up, just slide it up that floral wire, and that's gonna give you a thicker, shorter piece of lavender. So totally up to you on what look you're going for. And if you want to switch it up, you could do both in a mixture. My last step was to cut just some little leaf shapes. I just did this by hand. I glued one at the bottom to cover up the end of the lavender, as well as another one to give it some depth. This was from my stash, but Dollar Tree also has green felt, and I also love to buy felt at Walmart as well. Project number two has a special place in my heart because this is the Dollar Tree arrow sign that started it all. I found this cocktail sign last year and I decided to make it into this flower market sign. And then you guys know the rest is history. I've got so many different cut files for this sign on my channel. So I am painting it and then I'm cutting out this particular file. This is a free one over on my blog. And then I'm using my tried and true expressions vinyl paper transfer tape, which will be linked down in the description for you. If you haven't discovered it yet, you will love it. I absolutely do. This is not sponsored, but I absolutely love how it adds to the sign and it does not peel up the paint I just put down. I'm cutting this on just some black matte vinyl and this is so pretty, it can stay up all summer long. Number three is another one near and dear to my heart. You guys are asking when are spring printables coming? Today is your day. I've got a pack of 18 of them over on my blog. Here's just a quick little snippet of what you can expect when you download that free pack over on my blog, whiskeyandwit.com. The link will be down in the description. I absolutely love printables. I will also link my whole printables library down below so you can go ahead and check out all of the things that I have to offer. This project was actually born out of the mystery box challenge, these rustic solar lights. Kristen K sent me some of these solar lights from Dollar Tree, and I wanted to make something that we could put out near our fire pit for when we're making s'mores and give us a little bit extra light. So I took this frosted glass spray paint and spray painted a large and regular size ball mason jar. I also took some black spray paint to the two tops so that it would match the top of the solar light. While those were drying outside, I grabbed two little discs. These came from Hobby Lobby, but Dollar Tree has similar ones as well. And I went through and painted them both black so they would match the overall motif. Then it was time to assemble, so I popped the stake off the bottom. It's really easy to do. And then you just have the top of your light. I popped it in between the mason jar lid and realized it was a little small. So I just added some hot glue to make sure it would stick. That hot glue made it stay really well, and if the hot glue pops out at all, you can just use some black matte paint and just paint over the top. Now this is totally optional, but I took those discs and I glued them to the bottom of both of my jars to give them a really flat surface, and also to make them a little bit bigger and easier to grab when you are picking up all of the things from the fire at the end of the night. These are also great for your patio if you're just hanging out, having drinks, and enjoying the springtime. I absolutely love the quote on this next project and it's so easy to do. I grabbed one of these sets of two pot holders so you get two for $1.25 and I went through with some heat transfer vinyl and cut out these two designs that I personally made in Canva that are free for you to download over on my blog. 
Once I cut them out and weeded them, I pressed them down for 30 seconds at 330 degrees with my Cricut Easy Press. Now you could absolutely do these with an iron as well, so you don't need an Easy Press to do that because you don't have to get it that hot to press. I pressed both of mine with both Hello Spring and then this beautiful Oscar Wilde quote. And then depending on if it's a hot or cold peel with your heat transfer vinyl, follow the directions on the packaging and then it will tell you when to peel it. That's it, simple and easy to do. Something to keep in mind with these, I always get questions, can we use these? Yes, you can, but if something is so hot, it may warp the vinyl, so just keep that in mind. I like to hang them and just use them as decor. I really wanted a vase that was small like this one, but I couldn't find something that I liked. So I grabbed this glass one at Dollar Tree and decided to make it over. I started by giving it a thin coat of just some gray spray paint. You could use white or cream, whatever you have. I'm just using this to give it a base. And then I'm using some of this stone spray paint I had left over from a recent thrift flip video. I did a bunch of Kirkland's dupes and I used this technique on a lamp and absolutely loved it. So I sprayed the whole thing with that texture. It's gonna give it a really pretty pop and then seal it with some polyacrylic and you're good to go. It's a great vessel for that felt lavender that we just made. And you can also pop in some faux florals or because you spray painted the outside, add some water and grab some from your garden and it's ready to go. It's been a while since I've made over one of these Dollar Tree candles, but it is such a favorite of mine, especially when you can just add a decal. So here's what they look like in the store. I went ahead and grabbed it and took off the outside packaging. And then I designed this file with a peony flower that says no rain, no flowers, similar sentiment to no rain, no rainbows. I just cut this out in a scrap piece of pink vinyl, but you could do whatever color that you want. Also with it being so intricate here, I cut it on my iron on setting. It's gonna yell at you to mirror it. Don't worry about that. Just go ahead and cut it regularly. But because of the fact that it's very intricate like that, the iron on setting won't cut as deep and hopefully help you get it weeded a lot easier. Let's take a second to talk about today's sponsor, Green Chef. They are a CCOF certified meal kit company and they deliver chef curated restaurant style meals to you to cook at home. Since January, I've been eating in a calorie deficit and it's been extra work to plan, go shopping, prep, and then actually cook the food. So now Green Chef does that for me. Their boxes include high quality ingredients like fresh produce, premium proteins, and a variety of organic ingredients that make me feel good about what we're eating and how it got to our table. The great part is everything comes pre-measured, pre-portioned, and grouped by dish, which makes storing and finding what you need when you're cooking really simple. And it also helps cut out food waste. Green Chef is actually the most sustainable meal kit, which is a huge plus for us. They offset 100% of the plastic in every box and 100% of their carbon footprint emissions. In this particular box, we got chicken and broccoli bowls, Southwest turkey stuffed peppers, and honey citrus glazed salmon. I'm a huge fan of salmon when we go out to eat, but I was scared to make it at home. But I trusted the process, and just like the card said, it took me about 30 minutes from start to finish. The way the instructions were written, it was super easy to follow and everything finished about the same time, so nothing was plated cold. And they even gave me plating instructions to make it look like it was ordered from a restaurant. And it tasted so good. Green Chef offers options for every lifestyle like keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, fast and fit, Mediterranean, and gluten-free. You also have the flexibility to switch up those plans whenever you're ready so you can try something new. If this sounds like something that can make your life easier and more delicious, be sure to use my code WhiskeyWit130 for $130 off plus free shipping on your first box. You can head over to greenchef.com for more details. Now let's get back into the DIYs. Now for springtime at my house, I absolutely love the color purple and I love decorating with lavender, so you'll see that throughout this video. Project 8 is no exception. I'm starting with a mason jar that I got from Dollar Tree last year, but you could use any jar that you're looking for. These are cheap at Walmart as well, but you could definitely use a Dollar Tree container. Go ahead and paint it white with some chalk paint and then distress any of the raised areas that you've got on there. Then when your surface is all prepped, you're gonna wanna grab either some paint markers or some paint with a variety of different paint brushes so that we can make our lavender. I started with these Arteza paint markers. They have two options and these are the thinner ones. I'm starting with green and I'm doing a variety of different heights and different leaning ways of these different stems around the outside so it looks kind of just like natural lavender that you would see just growing outside. Then I'm taking one of three different purples I'm gonna be using and creating these little, they kind of look like teardrops. I don't know how to explain them, but they're just kind of little lavender pieces sticking out of the green stem. You're gonna do that all the way around the outside and make sure that each one has 
a little purple piece sticking out of the top. Then we're gonna go in and do the same thing, fill in some more of the areas with a lighter purple, and then we're gonna finish it off with a darker purple on top of all the elements. So it's gonna give you some depth. Here's what that looks like when I was all done with that. And then I ended up going through with a lighter green and just adding some dimension to the bottom, but that is totally optional. I love this to hold some lavender and some eucalyptus. This is just from Walmart that I threw in there. I also finished off the top with just a little bit of jute twine to kind of make it look all pulled together. And as somebody that's not a huge painter, I'm so proud of how this turned out. I get a ton of questions on where my boxwood wreath is from and I got it years ago, but I wanna show you how you can make one super cheap yourself. Grab a grapevine wreath from Dollar Tree and then you're also gonna want some boxwood. Now I went with Walmart boxwood with this because especially with the Dollar Tree price increase, it's basically the same price and there isn't really anything that will rival this at Dollar Tree. I grabbed six picks and I cut all the stems off. That gave me about 30 stems to work with. I'm gonna take two of them, tie them together with a long piece of jute twine. And then once they're hooked together, I'm gonna tie it onto my grapevine wreath. I like to use the jute twine for this because it's gonna look like it always was meant to be that way. You can use some floral wire, but sometimes that can poke out and look kind of funny. So here it looks like it's just part of the wreath. Then you're gonna grab two more pieces, tie them together and repeat that step all the way around the outside. I like to alternate inside outside so then that way it looks full both on the inner part and the outer part of the wreath. When you make it all the way around to where you started, make sure to tuck your stems underneath there. And I ended up starting with five cuts so I had to cut a sixth one here. Your last step to finish it off is to just take any of your pieces that are kind of going rogue and tie some jute twine around them so then that way it kind of hugs the circular shape. I added one more little sprig and my wreath was done. And it's way cheaper than if you were to even buy it at a store. I'm pretty sure mine was 30 bucks when I bought it. And this one was about 12. Now, if you like the way that I have it staged here, don't worry because I'm gonna show you exactly how to get this look with this wreath. I grabbed four of these recently at Dollar Tree. This was just last week that I grabbed these and I'm gonna take the canvas off the top. Now, the reason I went with these signs is because they are a square canvas and that's what I wanted to do with my window pane. If you can't find these, you can absolutely do the same thing and remove the canvas off of an eight by 10 canvas. Once all four were ready, I'm grabbing super glue as well as some Gorilla hot glue sticks for my glue gun. And I'm gonna use a mixture of both the super glue will help it stick longer and the hot glue will help it stick immediately. So then that way it will stay while the super glue is setting. That gel takes a little bit longer to set. I decided to use clamps to help me save time to hook the two pieces together and then hook the two double pieces together. These are also my DeWalt clamps that I just had in the garage, but if you don't have clamps, you can hold it by hand. Then when everything was dry, the last step was to just go through and add some popsicle sticks to overlap each of the seams. And this is on the back of my window just to make sure that it has a little bit more stability. It would probably be fine on its own, but with a little kid, I just wanna make sure that it's not gonna have a hard time and fall apart on me. You can put any type of wreath on here that you want and you could absolutely switch it out each season. So put a fall wreath, Christmas, spring, winter, it's a really versatile piece for around five bucks. Something you could easily put on to that window is this lavender wreath because it's the same size with that grapevine base. So we're using the same felt lavender that we made in the first project. So head back there and watch that again if you need a refresher on how to make that. I am grabbing six different pieces in a mixture of dark and light purple. And once I have it in a grouping that I like, I'm going to tie the bottom with some jute twine. One, it gives it a rustic feel, and two, it's gonna cover up the pieces of floral wire so it doesn't look so fake. Then I'm taking some scrap felt and cutting four pieces of the same size to look like leaves. And then I'm adding a little bit of hot glue in the center and pinching it to give it a 3D look. I'm gluing two on the inside and two on the outside of my grapevine wreath form just to kind of give a little bit more dimension to where my lavender pieces are gonna be glued down. I glued it down and then I added some jute twine to make it just look like it was more natural and just tied to the wreath. There are a ton of different options to use this to decorate. I plan on using this probably in a bathroom on a shelf. That way it gives me some color in there but it doesn't take up a ton of space. 
If you're looking for something unique, but also fun spring summer vibes, this lemon charger is for you. I'm using one of these faux lemon chargers from Dollar Tree, but you could use any of the chargers that they have. I started by painting mine with yellow Waverly chalk paint. This is the color Maze, and I made sure to give it two coats so it was completely covered. When that was dry, I went over to Pinterest and got myself an image of a lemon slice, so I had something to look at while I painted. I started with just some white paint to create a circle border around the outside, just on the inside of the outer lip. Then I used a tape measure just to find the center of my plate, and then I spun my paintbrush around with some pressure to create a circle in the center, and that's gonna really start making our lemon slice. After that, I created eight lines equally out from the center to start to create kind of the little inner pieces of a lemon wedge. And then go around the outside and create some curved shapes to continue that look. Once those were all done, the outside needs to be covered in white. And you don't have to make sure that it's 100% covered because we're going to cover it with a kind of blend it in with a different color here in a second. Once all my edges were curved the way I wanted them, I mixed a little bit of white with that maize yellow and kind of buffed out some of those edges so there weren't any harsh lines between the original yellow and the white. I did the same thing on the top of the little curved areas. And I also added some detail up above each edge as well just to kind of buff it out. There was too much white on the outside. Using that same white and yellow mixture, I added just some little bursts out in each of the eight pieces. And then I just used a little bit of white to add three seeds and it was good to go. This is a great stager piece. It can look great on its own, but it's also good behind some signs like I have this set up here. I use this for decor on top of my fridge because I have an area where there's just cabinets that we don't really get into and it works perfectly. Continuing on the lemon train, project lucky number 13 are these felt lemons. I made these last year for decor for my cousin's bridal shower, and I'm excited to report that this summer we're working on her baby shower, so that'll be coming up in a future video. I'm starting by tracing just some lemon shapes on some felt, as well as cutting out some leaves. These were ones I cut out on my Cricut. I just searched for a lemon shape, but you could also print one out from Google Images or freehand it yourself. You're gonna need two pieces of yellow and then two leaves per little pillow if you're doing a larger one like you see here, or if you're gonna do one for like a tiered tray, you're still gonna need two pieces of felt to create this little stuffed felt lemon. I'm going around the outside with just some hot glue here to adhere everything together, except for a little, little piece at the bottom so that I have room to stuff it with some polyfill. You can use cotton balls or an old pillow, really whatever you have on hand to kind of fluff it up and then glue it down so that your lemon is complete. I added my two little green leaves to the top just to add a little pop of color. And then this is totally optional, but I decided to add a blanket stitch around the outside just to add a little bit more whimsy to my lemons. And you can also do this with fabric as well. It doesn't just have to be felt. There's a ton of different options to create these kind of whimsy pieces. They're nice to throw into decor. If you haven't done a blanket stitch before, I will link a video down below on how I learned how to do it. But these turned out absolutely so stinking cute. And the other great thing about this technique is it doesn't just have to be for lemons. I also did these last year for some felt and fabric strawberries that also turned out super adorable. When I'm entertaining, I am always looking for items that fit the theme, and usually I can't find what I'm looking for. I decided to make over these Rayo jars, but you can use a Dollar Tree jar for this as well. To get the label off and the adhesive, I just put it in some hot water for about an hour and a half, rubbed it off, and it was good to go. But you can grab anything that you see in the Dollar Tree glassware section for this technique as well. I grabbed some fabric. This is actually a Dollar Tree fabric, which is awesome, but you can use fabric from anywhere if you've got some in your stash. And I'm just using Mod Podge to wrap it around the outside of my jar. Now you wanna make sure you give yourself a little bit of an overhang at the top and the bottom. So then that way, when you go to apply everything, you will be able to kind of put the lip over so it looks like it's not just stopping at the bottom like I'm doing here. You're going to take your extra fabric and cut a quick little slit around the outside 
and that is going to allow you to add some Mod Podge and fold it down flat like you would when you're wrapping a present. Repeat the same thing on the top of your jar, and if you've got a lip from where a lid was like I did, I took some jute twine and wrapped it around there, and you can't even tell. My last step was to just add a quick sealer coat of Mod Podge over the top. It's going to dry clear, but it's going to protect it, especially if you're using it at a party like I did. I used it on this drink table for fun straws at my cousin's shower, but you could also put some faux greenery in it and it would be beautiful in any display. We've made it to number 15. If you are still with me, be sure to leave me a comment. Let me know you're still with me. This project was actually inspired from one of my best friends, Bridal Showers. Her mother-in-law made these for the table centerpieces and I thought I could totally dupe that with Dollar Tree canvases so I don't have to cut all that wood. So I started with four Crafter Square 8x10 canvases and took a flathead screwdriver and some pliers to remove all of the staples on the back and then removed the canvas. You can put the canvases to the side and use it for another project. I just didn't need it this time. I sanded off my frames and then I decided to stain it with Briar Smoke by Verithane. Now there's two different ways you could do this. You could stain all four of them and then hook them together like I'm gonna do here. Or if you want, you could hook them together and then stain the whole thing at once. It's personal preference. Now I'm using Gorilla Glue wood glue. This is my favorite. I get it at Walmart to hook it together because they are wood pieces. And I'm using those DeWalt clamps that you've seen me use before. They're nice to have on hand. You don't need a ton of them, but they hold things really tight, especially if you're doing multiple projects at once or you just don't wanna sit and hold stuff. But once you've got your four pieces together, you can decorate it however you want. I've done this in a variety of different ways. You could really customize this however you want and you can switch out the greenery for each season so you could leave this out all year long. This project is a super fun hack to get a really trendy floral pillow without having to have any types of fancy machines. So I grabbed two of these canvas bags from Dollar Tree and I cut off the two back squares because those were the blank pieces of fabric. If you can't find these at Dollar Tree, you can use any like light color fabric that you can find. You can also use a burlap drop cloth. I started by pressing them because they were pretty wrinkled and then I lined them up and did my pillow trick. So we're going to do a line of hot glue around the entire outside, except for just a little bit of a hole so that you can flip it either inside out or just stuff it if you're gonna leave your seams exposed. For this particular one, I flipped it inside out, used my fingers to make sure the edges were pushed out and then I got ready to transfer my peony image. So this one I found off of Google Images and I just printed it out to the size I wanted. I stuck it on top of my pillow, but in between my paper and my pillow is a piece of graphite paper. And so as I'm tracing this, it's gonna transfer it to my pillow, as you can see here. And then I'm able to just go through with a fine tipped Sharpie, not before I put some paper underneath so it doesn't bleed through to the back. And I'm just going through and retracing it. It was a pretty quick process. I was able to do this in under 15 minutes and it looks like a really pretty line drawn image that I just drew from memory. Nobody knows I cheated. And once I got everything stuffed here, I decided to glue the bottom shut and then add some black tassels to the each of the four corners to match my overall motif in my living room. And this thing you could have easily picked up at a boutique or at a fun vendor show and you made it yourself with Dollar Tree supplies. If drawing is not your vibe, you could also do a 3D pillow like I did here with my felt lavender. Use some jute twine to tie it up. And then the pillow is actually made out of a fleece baby blanket from Dollar Tree. This one was so nice and neutral with the gray pieces. I just took some hot glue, stuck my lavender onto the pillow, and then you can use any additional hot glue that you have to make your pieces stay. Obviously, you're not gonna be laying on this pillow. It's definitely totally decorative, but it is super cute. And here with my neutral palette, it adds just enough spring color and pop. I absolutely love these signs and at first glance you would definitely think they're wood but they're actually faux wood and so i created these last year because i didn't have a ton of space to store a lot more wood bulky heavy signs so i decided to create these botanical prints and this is a process that if you haven't done before on how to make the frame and things like that i explain it in much more detail over on the original video so i will link that down below but the technique to create the wood starts with antique wax 
you put it on, you kind of bend your foam board like this so it kind of starts to look crackled. You dry brush on a little bit of black paint to really expose those crackles and lines. And then you can buff out that black paint with some more antique wax. So once those are dry, it's time to assemble. So I cut a decal that would fit inside of this faux frame. I glued down all of my pieces to the black foam core and it looks like a really pretty chalkboard sign. Again, this is a process that is better explained, but I don't want you to hang out here for too long. I know you're busy. So I've got all of that information. If this looks like something you wanna make for your house over on that original video. Now until last year, I had never done any type of bee decor. I know it's super trendy. I was all about the lemons, but this bee DIY has to be one of my favorites. So I grabbed one of these containers from Dollar Tree. It's just a nautical container, but you can use anything that resembles a honey pot. And I started by drawing some hexagon shapes that were hooked together to start looking like a honeycomb. I just freehanded this, but you can pull up an image on Google image, or you can print out something and put it on the inside of the glass so that you can trace it with the Sharpie. After I did that, I went through with a fine tipped hot glue gun and I just traced all of those edges. I pulled off all of those little hairs, but this is gonna give you a 3D look of a honeycomb. I started by spraying the entire thing with just some flat white spray paint to kind of neutralize everything. So then that way the blue wasn't showing through. And then when that was dry, I just took a disposable makeup sponge and some yellow Waverly chalk paint and dabbed it all around the outside. It made it so then that way it wasn't just a full coverage. It kind of looked a lot more texturized. I ended up adding these little honeybee rods from Amazon. And then I grabbed some of these golden glue sticks to create some faux honey. It was super quick and easy to do. I just put it in an old glue gun so I didn't have to worry about it and I glued it on top of my little honey pot. I've got a full video of 10 different bee DIYs so if you want more information on this or all the DIYs you can head over to that video and I'll be sharing a couple more of those coming up in this video. Now to go with your honey pot I also have a honey book stack that says fresh local honey. This is one of those Dollar Tree crates that I had stained from a previous project and decided that I didn't need it. So I decided to paint it for this one. I did the top and bottom rungs as a white paint and then I did yellow in the center. And you're gonna wanna make sure that wraps around the entire thing. Once it's painted, it's gonna look like you have books stacked up. And I just cut some text on my Cricut, but you could freehand this or use Dollar Tree stickers to spell out fresh local honey. Then to continue to make it look like a book, I used some ribbon to make it look like they were all kind of bound together. I started with a black satin ribbon and then I added a black and white buffalo check ribbon that was smaller over the top. Then to finish it off, I added another one of those little honey dippers that I added some of the faux honey to. And then I added a little bit more of just a honey drip on top of it to look like the bees were there. This is a quick and easy way to get a book stack for your tiered tray and it was only $1.25. And what would a bee farm be without a beehive? So this is made from a Dollar Tree little cloche as well as some of their decorative nautical rope. I just used some hot glue and the rope and started at the bottom. I left the black piece exposed because I knew that would go with the motif. And I wrapped three pieces of the nautical rope around the entire thing. It's a super quick and easy process, pretty mindless. Just add some glue and wrap it around. And then once you get to the top, wrap it around until you don't see any more of the clear dome. Then I used a scrap piece of the rope to create a little doorway and then I painted the inside black so it looked like that was the entrance to the hive. And then I found these cute little bees on Amazon last year. They're actually little stickers so you peel off the back, stick them down and they make such a fun and whimsy addition to this cute little hive. This is a great size for a tiered tray or just a little vignette on your counter and it goes really cute with those little honey dippers as well. This has to be one of my favorites from the bee theme that I have ever done, this for sale fresh and local honey. It started with one of my favorite Dollar Tree signs ever, one of these pennant signs, and then just some little paint stir sticks that I got from Home Depot. I started by lining up my sticks to see how wide I had to cut them and then also to the bottom so then that way it wouldn't look like a pennant anymore, it would just look like a palette sign. 
If you can't find this sign, you can use any Dollar Tree sign for this. It doesn't have to be this particular one. Then I went through with my miter box and cut down all of my little pieces so that I could glue them onto my sign and create all of these little slats. Before I glued them on, I made sure to sand the edges so then that way they weren't rough for me cutting them on the miter box. The miter box is a plastic box plus a saw you can get on Amazon. It's very inexpensive and it will help you cut little projects like this. Then I took it outside and decided to do a quick coat of just some flat white spray paint. It dried a lot quicker because it was warmer out and it kind of gave a different look than just painting over with a paintbrush. This is another free download that I designed over on my blog. You can download it, you can head over there and you can download every file, printable, all the things from this video. Using my Expressions Vinyl Paper Transfer Tape to apply this to this sign as well, just making sure that it is centered and then peeling back my transfer tape. This is another one where I added some of that faux honey and I had a bunch of those honey dippers so I added it to just about everything. It gave it a really fun and cohesive look and being able to add some of the dripped honey to everything just really made it all look super cute and pulled together. Let me know down in the comments, do you decorate with bee decor? Because I didn't, but this made me change my mind. And don't worry if you don't like the bee decor because you could easily do just a little bit different something with the same sign. So that same pennant sign, I'm going to paint it white and then take a little bit of antique wax and put it across the top of the sign just to make it dark wood. Now we're gonna paint a buffalo check. And you guys, it has been a hot second since I have done any sort of buffalo check painting on my channel. I had just went super hard on it and I got a little burnt out, but I have started doing it again, so I am excited about that. The first thing we're gonna do is do vertical stripes. So I'm taking one inch painter's tape, I'm using a little piece as a spacer, and I'm doing the vertical stripes. I'm gonna paint them in with a light gray paint and then make sure that fully dries. Once it's dry, we're going to peel off our painter's tape carefully and stick it to the side because we don't wanna get rid of it. We're gonna need it here in the future. Then because it's dry, again, this is why you want to make sure it's dry. We're going to go through and do horizontal stripes, or if you did horizontal first, you could do vertical. It doesn't matter which order you do them in. You're just going to need some of each, but I'm using that little spacer piece and working my way down the sign. Once those pieces are all set in place before you get ready to paint, you're going to want to take a pencil, pen, whatever, and mark where the white lines are because that's gonna tell you where that painter's tape was originally and you're gonna need that help in a minute when you go to put it back on. So we're using the same gray paint and painting over to create a grid of stripes. And then those pieces I told you not to get rid of from our first round, we're going to replace them over the top of those other ones to really create a grid here. Once everything is put back where it needs to go, you're gonna take a dark gray paint and fill in all of the exposed squares. That is where all of your stripes overlap and that's where your buffalo check needs the dark color. Then when it's dry, you can peel off all your painter's tape and you will magically reveal some really pretty buffalo check. Now, if you are not a buffalo check painter or don't wanna to have to do this, you could absolutely cover your sign with a buffalo check contact paper, scrapbook paper, whatever. I finished off the sign with just a little bit of leftover lavender and eucalyptus from a previous project. And this is a really great piece to hang over a wreath. This would fit really well over that boxwood wreath we talked about before. Tons and tons of different options, but it is so quick and easy and you wouldn't think it's Dollar Tree. This next one, the exact same thing. You would not think that this is from Dollar Tree, but it's really easy to make with one of these 3D wreath hoop forms. So it comes with a lot of different pieces. I decided to just use one of the largest pieces and I cut up some Walmart eucalyptus as well as some Walmart lavender. Now I'm taking the eucalyptus and lavender and kind of laying it out where I want it. And then I'm gonna go through with some jute twine and tie it on to the wreath form. Now I like to use jute twine because it looks more natural, it looks more rustic like my style, but if you wanna use floral tape or floral wire, you can. I just prefer to do it with the jute twine. Once I tied on all my pieces to get it to kind of flow with the hoop, then I'm adding on some lavender. 
Now, the reason that I'm big on Walmart florals is because especially with the Dollar Tree price increase to $1.25, you can spend just about the same amount of money, but get nicer quality picks, especially at that $1.28, $1.88 price point. So that's just my two cents. Dollar Tree does have lavender. So if that's what you want to go with, you could absolutely make it there too. But I just tied everything on so that it went with the hoop shape with that jute twine and it worked out great. This last one, this floral centerpiece is going to be awesome for anything you've got going on this spring and summer. Grab three of these little crates from Dollar Tree and glue them together with either super glue or some wood glue. I'm using the Gorilla Wood glue here and clamps. Once it's all hooked together, stain it your color of choice. I am using Briar Smoke. And one thing I wish I did with this was add some additional stain into the little crevices. So you win, you lose, you learn all the things. And so if you're doing this, learn from my mistake and just put some additional stain in the slats. Now to get it ready for flowers, I just added some floral foam. It's two pieces from Dollar Tree that I cut down to fit inside. And then I'm using my miter shears again to cut down my florals. I hardly ever use floral picks in their original form. It's just so much easier to cut them into their own individual pieces. It gives you so much freedom and flexibility. I'm starting with my big bright pink ones, filling in with light pink peonies. Again, those are from Dollar Tree, the peonies are. And then I'm using boxwood picks from Walmart. So once you kind of fill it up with your bigger flowers, you can add in those sprigs to either side and that's gonna make it feel nice and full. But you could make this with school colors if your kid's graduating. This is great for showers. It's also great for Mother's Day, a ton of different options. You can really customize it. And the best part is I've taken flowers in and out of this a ton of times and so you can reuse again and again and again thanks so much for watching and a huge thank you to green chef for sponsoring today's video and supporting whiskey and wit be sure to head over and check out greenchef.com and use my code whiskey wit 130 for 130 dollars off plus free shipping on your first box as always head down to the comments and let me know your favorite project in today's video and be sure to hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss a future video i'll catch you in the next one bye